Good evening, everyone. Welcome to Sunday night's Zoom call. Um, this is a skills call this week, um, but it is a skills call all about how to get people off to a fast start when they join the team. So I have got the lovely Alex on this evening, and there's lots of new people on this call. So for those who don't know Alex, she has been in the business three years. Yeah. Three years, she is a group leader, very close to senior group leader, 100 plus club member, mini owner, qualified for everything, I need to take a breath. She doesn't, and that's how she's done all of that. Um, so she is exceptionally good at getting people started. She's got a system, she sticks to it, and she's very good at duplicating it down within her team as well. So please have your notebooks ready because she has got a lot to tell us, um, and we're gonna make sure we stick to it. Most importantly, why? she gets each step done in that first meeting because we've got new people on the call tonight, Alex. So mm -hmm. I've tried to come on because this is basically going to be the steps in the fast start meeting. So we're killing two birds with one stone, but also you're going to go into a little bit more detail about why you get us to do each step as well. Because yeah. it's important that is. So I've just started in your team. Mm -hmm. What do I do? Okay, well, I think it's important to take it back first to the first uh like the actual recruitment meeting because yeah. for me this is where i mean why have they joined your team they've joined your team because they're feeding off your excitement you are totally invested in this business you completely believe in it or maybe you're being supported by somebody else who who does um either way that's fine there's lots of excitement in the room and that's why they join because they really believe that you you believe in it and they're just catching on that okay so in that meeting, well, sorry, when you've just recruited them, they've obviously got their ID number and their password. I mean, obviously, every now and again, it doesn't happen immediately, in which case you just need to bear with. But in the main, you've got all of that information there and then, and you log on to their system and show them how to do their online training because it's amazing how many people fall down just at that first hurdle. And it's not their fault. Maybe they've never particularly used that kind of technology before. Um, you know, you don't want them coming back to you three days later saying they haven't done their online training because they couldn't work out how to get into their portal. So just show them how to do it, maybe get it on their phone, all that sort of stuff. Then also, obviously, as you know, in those first four, first four little messages, <coughs> excuse me, one of them is, complete your classroom training. So you want to actually go on and book it with them there because sometimes it might need a little bit of logistical, you know, maybe somebody needs a lift or something like that. In which case, if you can sort all of that out there and then, you're not leaving it to them to go and do and then perhaps not come back to you and tell you that they don't know how to get there and all this sort of stuff. Just get it done, get it done for them, you know, help them, show them how to do it. So that's the two lots of training ticked off already. Um, and then tell them that they have got, it depends, how, it depends when you're going to book the fast start meeting for, but basically you're going to book a fast start meeting in with them. And the ideal time scale from that meeting to the fast start meeting is about two days. So somewhere in the region of two to three days, I really wouldn't leave it any longer than that, any shorter than that. And it's a bit too quick to do the online training, but you need that online training done before you meet. And it's really, really important that you stick to that because you may only have one or two people in your team at the moment, and that's fantastic. You're obviously getting off to a good start. But believe me, when you get to the point where you've got 10, 20, 50, 100 plus people in your team, you just don't have enough time to help absolutely everybody in those first, in those first few weeks. And you've got to decide. It's really important for you to value your own time. You have to decide who to work with in your team. Now, if somebody can't do online training in three days, which is essentially watching some YouTube videos, then are they going to be the people that are going to zoom forward to future team leader, team leader, like helping other people duplicating this system? It's unlikely. I'm sure there's anomalies, but it's unlikely. So if you have to start working out how valuable your time is, and you know, you could be supporting other team members, you could be getting new people started, etc. If you value your time, only work with the ones that are actually willing to do a very small thing that you've asked them to do. So it's funny because it's actually less about having had the online training done by that point. It's more about them showing you willing. If you've told them, if you to be successful in this business, you've got to get that online training done in two days. Then if somebody can't do that, then how much do they really want this? So I would really, really labor that point. Anyway, you've booked the fast start meeting and you've told them that the online training needs to be done by them. So then we're on to the actual class start meeting. Now, I would always say if you can do this in person, then obviously that's great. It's a relationship business. The more time, actual time we spend with our team, 
you're going to get on much better in the future. You're going to be able to work together better. But for me, timescales are more important. If you can't physically be in a room with that person for four weeks, then don't leave it four weeks. Do it in the two days. Do it over Zoom. Okay. Um, and the reason I obviously Hannah said touch a little bit on the whys. The reason that this time frame I feel is so important is because that excitement that I was talking about in the beginning, you it's your excitement that they're feeding off at that point. It takes very little for them in their real world situation in their life to be knocked off course. If there's nothing positive going on in those few days for them, if it goes on for a week, if it goes on for two weeks and they haven't booked an appointment, they haven't seen anybody, they haven't seen anybody in the team in that time, the rest of their life starts chipping away at them about how this, you know, we've all been there. We've all had people say to us, what are you doing? You know, you're nuts. But for new people who haven't been exposed to the success that we've seen and we feel, it's very hard for them to actually stand up against that. So they need things to be continually happening on their journey that are just sort of pulling them along from one little goal to the next so that when those things happen, they can actually stand up and say, no, do you know what? It is working. I've already got appointments. I've already done this. I've been to pizza. I've gone and gone to a major event. You know, they're starting to just get those little, little bits of belief that's going to keep them in in those first few weeks. So then anyway, what do we actually deliver in that fast start meeting? So the first thing we talk about is the why. Now, I'm not going to labour this point because it's talked about a lot, so you should all know what this is, but basically just making sure that they know why they've joined and that they can articulate it in a couple of sentences at the beginning of an appointment. And um, if you come on our fast start calls, we do quite a bit on that um, in that, so, so you should already know what that is. But importantly for me the second part of the why is that um i understand and potentially if i'm supporting somebody else who's starting somebody off that, that everybody basically in that little group understands what success means to them because it's i mean great fantastic somebody joins your team they want to earn two thousand pounds a month that's going to be really great growth for you but you know what we still want the people who only want a hundred pounds a month because they are just as important and we should treat them exactly the same hundred pounds every couple of months. It doesn't matter. The fact is they've joined this business for something that's important to them. And what I want to do as their supporter is help them get that. And it doesn't matter if their goal isn't the same as mine. I need to understand what that is because if I start treating someone who wants to earn a hundred pounds a month, like someone who wants to earn 2000 pounds a month, of course I'm going to scare them off straight away. So it's really important that as our, as leaders and as supporters, we understand what success looks like to them. And then we can measure it as well. And we, can we, we know whether they're staying on track and whether they're going to be happy with the results that they're getting. So, um, so they need to articulate that to you. And as, as well as specific things, like if they've particularly joined because they want a hamper or they've particularly joined because they want to go to Orlando, then obviously there may be some decisions we need to make along the line that help them achieve that. Um, you know, and just and keeping them, keeping them incentivized and keeping them going and things like that. It's important for everybody involved to understand why, why they're doing it. Um, I also, as part of that, tend to just um, allude back to the simple money presentation that we probably used to recruit them anyway. So you may already know the answer to the question, but when you find out how much money they want to earn, if it is money that they've joined for, then I just reverse engineer the activity. So I think it's really important from the start if people understand what level of activity is actually going to be needed if they want to earn a certain amount per month. So we know that in, I mean, not necessarily in the business, but certainly in our team, about 80% of the, um, of, of the customers that are gathered are Daffy Gold, which is, is re relatively high for the business in general, but it's, it's fairly normal for us. Um, and also, and the company average is one in two people that watch your presentation will become a customer at some point. And I would say probably in our team we're higher than that, but I like to use that as a, as a fairly, um, you know, relatively low standpoint. So using those two statistics, we know exactly how many people we need to be seeing on a monthly basis in order for those new people to achieve what they want to achieve. So just give them an indication of that because you don't want to shock them you know, six months down the road, they're not being successful in their eyes. And you suddenly say, well, it's no wonder you're not being successful because you've only been seeing two people a month. Well, how did they know that that wasn't going to work if you don't give them some sort of guidance? So obviously we're talking about a certain number of appointments, which leads really nicely on to actually booking the first six. 
So um, I appreciate you may think, well, okay, we now it's slightly different now because now we're actually being paid to support all six first six signups. But for me, we're still sticking to just booking six supported appointments in that fast start meeting. If you go much higher than that, and it's just it's just not going to happen. But actually, you know, we've we've had situations in the team where the first six supported appointments have been six staffies. So there's nothing to suggest that those six won't all happen anyway and if they don't then you've always got the opportunity of just booking a few more within those 45 days so I still stick to having the goal of six supported appointments booked in that meeting that's why it's really important to make sure that the meeting is booked for a time when it's socially acceptable to make phone calls so obviously if you're meeting at 10 o'clock at night you're not going to get anybody on the phone it's unlikely anyway um, so make sure those appoint that 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 you know, the, the meeting is actually booked at a time when you can make calls. And we go through the script, which my favorite script um, for supported appointments particularly is, I've started a new business. Um, uh, in order to pass my training, I have to show my presentation to six of my friends and family. My mentor's gonna come in just to make sure that I'm doing it correctly and it's gonna tick me off so I can go on and, um, and, and you know and, and build my business etc and you don't worry it's all like that, writing all that down because it's all on the portal it's also all on our um our script video as well so um and so i go through that with them if they come if they want to i do a little bit of role play with them some people would actually much prefer to just go and get on the phone and get it done um, other people like to practice it over and over again all the way that's absolutely fine but then we talk about the alternate close as well something that Hannah's always talking about on our fast start calls um, very very important we still use it now so just make sure that that person is actually choosing their appointment time themselves rather than us making an appointment for them um, but also it's funny because I think if you don't talk about that bit do you know what happens somebody gets on the phone and they go oh my god they said yes they said yes okay I'll message you I'll message you and then you're like, oh, well, it's great that they said yes, but you haven't actually booked the appointment. So, you know, and there is that level of excitement as well when the first person does actually say yes. I mean, they're all going to say yes because nobody's going to say no to doing you a favour. That's, that's the funny part of it because obviously when you speak to people initially, you know, don't get me wrong, nine times out of ten when I do a fast start meeting, of course the person says, what, what sorry, so I, I make the call now? Like right now, here, with you? I'm like, Yeah. But what if they say they won't say no? Look, I'll what, you won, and if they say no, fair enough, we don't have to do anymore because nobody ever says no to that. So it's actually really nice because then they sit there and they go, Oh, they said yes. I'm like, Yeah, so we can do it again now, can't we? And we just do it six times and we get the appointments. So, um, but what I would say about that is, is don't, it, and, and obviously, if, you, if you're not used to doing this, obviously, it will take you a bit of time to get to the point where you're strong enough to kind of just keep going with it. But don't let people off. Because we had, I had a perfect example of one the other day. I can't see everybody on the call, but I'm pretty sure he's on the call. And um, when, he got, when he got to the beginning of the Fast Start meeting, he said to me, yeah, you see, making these calls is going to be really tricky because I, I actually don't know anybody. I was like, come on, you do. Show me your phone. And he got his phone out. He's got 30 contacts on his phone. I said, right, well, we're just going to start at the top and we're going to go down. Explain everybody to me and your relationship and why we can't call them. And of course, he didn't even get through the A's before we would had six people that we could actually call. And we made six appointments there and then. So a lot of people do start off thinking, you know, when you tell them that's what we're going to be doing now, they are shocked and they are yeah, I just, I don't have anybody, nobody would pick up to me right now. I can't call anybody. And then if you actually start going through their contacts or their Facebook friends or whatever, you will find people that they can call. So don't let them, don't let them get away with it. But equally what you're actually doing, if you let them get away with it, is letting yourself get away with it. Because actually what you're saying is I'm, I'm not going to push this. I'm not strong enough to push this. But believe me, People who, and I, and I, you know, even there's even somebody on the call tonight who's actually in Australia at the moment, who I can see. And she said, Katie said to me at the beginning when I first did hers, she, she only wanted to make one phone call and that was it. And she was really not happy about doing that one. But we made six appointments and now she says to me, I'm so glad that you made me do that. So you might think that you're overwhelming somebody by doing that but actually they will thank you for it in the end. And it's, it's funny because so many people say to me, yeah, it's all right for you because you're very red and it's easy for you to be a direct and it's easy for you to do things like that. Firstly, it's not always easy and even I feel flustered sometimes. But secondly, if you're actually quite a yellow personality, think of it that you are letting that person down. 
if you let yourself off the hook in this situation, you're actually letting them down because you're not giving them the best possible start and you're not giving them the opportunity to go on and be really good in this business, or at least you're not giving them the best chance of that. So if, if you are yellow or any other colors and you think that being this red just isn't for you, then just think of it like that. You don't have to say it in the same language that I do, but just don't let yourself off is what I would say. So anyway, that's supported appointments. I think I've done everything on that. Um, then we book a business launch. And quite often the question people ask me about the business launch is, why is it relevant if we've literally just booked six appointments with the people that would support us? It's absolutely relevant and it doesn't matter who you invite. So you can invite all the people that you've done supported, you've booked supported appointments with. You can invite new people. You can invite people you don't know very well. Absolutely anybody. Because actually, for the people who aren't, forget the people who have already done the, the supported appointments at the moment, everybody else is really important because if somebody... Um, if some if somebody says no, they can't make the can't make the business launch. You're in a conversation with them now. They know you've got a new business, and they know that it's something that they want to find out about. So that, then it's very easy then just to say, okay, no worries that you can't come, but I'll um, you know how how soon can we have a coffee and I'll fill you in on what you missed. And there's an appointment, and they know you're going to show them something. They know that you're going to you know that you've got a new business so it's not awkward it's a fantastic opportunity for an appointment so those no's are just as important as the people who say yes but in terms of the people who you've done supported appointments with there could be any manner of situations they could sign up as a customer but not as a partner and therefore coming to the uh business launch actually pushes them over the edge and makes them decide to join as a partner they might have done the appointment and then perhaps thought, well, um, actually my husband needs to see this. So actually the opportunity of a business launch would be great to bring the husband along. Or they might sign up as a customer, as a partner, and they think it's amazing. And then that's great to have those people at your launch because there's other people in the room that are positive. So there's really, I can't think of any reason why you wouldn't want those people in the room, no matter what happened in the, in, in the appointment. So yeah, business launch. And then lastly, it's events. And um, the, the aim for me is to make sure that actually in that fast start meeting, they book their ticket to the next big event. So obviously there's four a year. Most of the time there's a ticket on sale or something. There's obviously a couple of points in the year where there isn't, in which case I just make sure that they black marker out their diary and they can't fit anything else in on that day because we always know the dates well in advance. But, um, but I mean, at the moment we've got the kickoff. So there's no reason why new people shouldn't be booking those kickoff tickets in their fast start meeting. And I can tell you this, I can think of so many people in the team who didn't have a great start, but booked their ticket. And then it's the fact that they were coming to that event that has kept them in. They've come to the event and then they've just gone, oh my God, what am I doing? I am literally sitting on a gold mine. But if they hadn't been to that event, they wouldn't have known. And you know what? If I'd left it two weeks after the first fast start meeting, they would never have booked the ticket because already they've lost that momentum and they've lost that belief and that excitement that they were feeding off initially. So um, equally, we had people, we, we did an accelerator recently and the three people that we asked to speak on having such a fast start, all of them came to their first big event and they are now coming up to their second big event and they've already booked their tickets and they were one of the first people to book. So, you know, you look at that situation, they were sitting up on the stage. One was team leader within seven months and the other two were kind of 10, 12 customers win within a couple of months. And people were like, oh, that's amazing. Like, I'd love to do that. And yeah, they came to their first big event a few weeks after joining the team. They've already booked their next one. Oh, and they followed the system. So, you know, it's not, and I've seen it. It's funny actually, because there's been a couple of messages on the group this week. I think Hannah's congratulated a couple of people for doing what sounds like spectacular stuff. Um, but actually, when you look at what it is, it is just the system. And people, especially people who haven't been uh, um, necessarily exposed to it in the way that we expose our team to it, are saying, oh, what's this system? What's this system? And we're like, it's just the system. You know, it is just the system. It's just perhaps we deliver it in a slightly more direct way. And I think also maybe sim slightly simpler, a bit more direct. But also, we just absolutely make sure that everybody that joins the team knows about it. We're not allowing them to go and discover it for themselves, which might take a few months. You know, we want them to know about it in the first couple of days. Um, sorry, I digress a little there on um, events. I also particularly point out Pizza Tuesday and the opportunity presentation um, after the big events. 
I, I would say probably you can pick whatever is working for you in your team. But those two things, we've got so many recruits from both of those events and, and maybe less so pizza, but the opportunity presentation is massively underused. So um, I, you know, those are the two things that I make sure are scheduled in their diary. The next two of those are in their diaries and um, they know how to get their tickets and um and they know what what is expected of them and as far as i'm concerned you are expected at every pizza tuesday you are expected at every opportunity presentation and you are expected to bring a guest now there will be times when those guests let you down and i get that you have no control over that but that doesn't mean that you shouldn't be there so that's what they get told in that situation and of course in our team we have the fantastic fantastic 8 30 calls on a sunday night and you know this, this meeting is not in place of the fast start call the fast start call goes into much more detail than i ever go into in the first fast start meeting so it's really really good to use them both together and then obviously the skills calls as well um just making sure that that's a regular occurrence you know it's, again it's not it's not amazing to realize that the people that are always on the 8.30 calls are the people that are always getting their results every week. You know, it's, it's, it may well be chicken and egg. I don't know which way around it goes, but it doesn't really matter because the people that are on the calls are the people that are getting the results. So as far as I'm concerned, I want the results. So I'm going to get on the calls. Um, and I think probably I need to take a breath. Okay. I've got questions. So <laughs> Go Hi, um, I've joined your team and you've gone through all that with me, but obviously a bit more interactive. You didn't just uh, yell at me. No. Um, so you've given me a script to use to get my first few appointments. Yeah. Why is that script so important that I stick to it? Why can't I just tell my friends I'm going to help save them some money and it's Utility Warehouse? I'm really excited and proud that I've joined Utility Warehouse. Why can't I just go and tell everyone? Okay, I'll give you a really good example of this, actually. Um, we went, I went to a supported appointment a few weeks ago and um, it was one of one of six that had been booked and the id had done exactly what i'd asked her to do she hadn't mentioned anything about utility warehouse she just asked for a favor to practice her presentation she said to me beforehand oh this will be a lovely appointment she's such a lovely lady it's you know i'm really excited i think this could really be for her like, great so we do a little bit of rapport building and i turn my tablet around and it says utility warehouse on it i said so we work for utility warehouse have you heard of us before Yes, and um, can I just stop you there? Um, somebody came around and showed me all this um, a couple of months ago, and I'm thinking, oh, it's only a couple of months ago. That's a shame as well, because I can't even say it's changed. Um, uh, you know, she came around. It's not for me. She showed me everything. It's really not for me. I didn't particularly like it. There were no savings. Um, so, you know, perhaps it's, I don't want to waste your time, but it really isn't for me. And I said, 100% you're not wasting our time, because the reason we are here is for this person to practice their presentation in front of you. So if you don't mind, it would be fantastic if we can just run it through as we normally would and she can see it in a live situation. She, absolutely, anything I can do to help this lady, absolutely no problem at all, fire away. We did the presentation and we ended up with a Daffy Gold homeowner and a partner. <laughs> I mean, I don't really need to say anymore, do I? She said to me that it's interesting at the end, the person who came around didn't actually do a quote. I don't know who it was or what, what they did, but they didn't do a quote. So how, how she knew that there wasn't any savings, I don't know. She wasn't shown the business opportunity um, and it wasn't properly presented with, a, you know, they didn't do the Joanna video and stuff like that. So I don't really know what they did. But anyway, the point being, if she had said that it was Utility Warehouse, that lady wouldn't have seen us. Yeah. That's a shame. Yeah. I'm really hoping that the person who showed her the first time wasn't in my team. Um, well, <laughs> who should we make appointments with? So I'm going to go, right, let's go and see my mum, my 90-year-old nan, and um, my best friend who is really scared. Okay. Well, I think probably, it, if you'd asked me this two months ago, I would have said 100%. The tricky ones, so that you can see a tricky appointment, the challenging ones, the skeptical ones, so that we can get those people on side so that they don't start nipping away at you. Um, the people that you think might want to join your business, those people. Let's leave mum and sister and whoever else might just do it because it's you until month two when you're going out on your own. Um, I, I do, however, appreciate that now we want to mix it up a little bit. You know, yes, we want to get good people, new people started well. And yes, it is, that is the best way of doing it. So yes, I would still say that that is the best way of doing it. 
But I do appreciate that now things have changed a little bit and you're not going to want to say no to the easy option within those first six because this is just as much about you as it is about them, especially now that they've made it much more about us. So I would say maybe mix it up. So give yourself a couple of easy wins so that you know, you know, if you're doing your six business builder points a month, you're going to be getting paid 300 quid a time for these things. So if you want, give yourself a couple of easy wins. So you've got that 600 pound banked and then go and do the tricky ones, then go and do the, um, the you know, the, the recruitment ones. Because the chances are, as you all know, that when we prejudge, we genuinely, generally get it wrong anyway. So if you go and do the tricky ones, they're probably the ones that are actually a bit savvy. This person might think they're tricky, but actually it means that they're switched on and they know what they're talking about and there'll be an interesting conversation and maybe more likely to join the team. So, you know, I, I think we don't necessarily judge the tricky ones as being ones that won't happen anyway. Um, and we've got 45 days to do it anyway. So the first six, you know, the chances are, if you're following the system, even if the first six don't actually become customers, you've got enough time to then rebook the easy ones afterwards. So, yeah, I would still say, you know, do, do still be mindful of that. Because, you know, in reality, a lot of people that you get started will, will do the six appointments and they'll get some results from that, but they won't take it any further. That is just the nature of the beast. So, you know, we don't want to be losing out on getting into their network and meeting some of those people who may join the team and who then may be the stars that we're looking for. And um, I don't normally call my friends. If I did, they probably think that I've like had an accident or something. Can I text them? No, sorry. Because the problem with texting them is we're not going to get a response right now. And then we're just going to sit here for how long waiting for these people to come back to us because you're not leaving my house or I'm not leaving your house until you have six appointments in the diary. So if you really want me staying over tonight, then fire away and send some messages. But if not, then you're going to have to pick up the phone. Right, cool. Um, so uh, talking about events, so we know that events are absolutely key and we don't know anyone who's a success in this business who hasn't attended the events. Um, so say I've just joined, I've yep. spent quid joining or a hundred pounds and then I've done my online training and then we sit down and do all this how do you, I know a lot of people at this point worry about bringing up the events and that it's 20 pounds and that you're going to have to maybe travel for two hours and all sort of stuff how do you promote it within that fast start meeting effectively enough for them to book their tickets well I mean we've always said haven't we that um you know if you can genuinely look me in the eye afterwards and tell me that you didn't get any value from it I'll give you the money back so, you know, that does come out from time to time. Um, but also, I think, you know what, if, if by the time you've got to the bit about of events, you have infused them enough about this business, bear in mind, we've already talked about how much money they want to earn a month. Now, even if somebody says £100 to you, that's £100 more than they would have had before they started this business. So surely £20 out of that first 100 is worth a ticket to an event that is going to potentially ensure that they're going to be earning £100 a month for the rest of their life if that's what they want or if they want more than that then obviously it's significantly more than that but £20 is such a small proportion of what they will earn over the next month if they follow the system and the great thing is I mean I appreciate if this is the first time you've done a fast start appointment you don't necessarily have the stats to back it up but believe me just take it from the rest of the team because if you follow the system you'll get the results but I can sit there and say look if you follow this system, we can go and get £1,000 in your first month if that's what you want. If that's what you want, I'm here to help you go and do that. £20 is very insignificant in comparison. Now, I appreciate there are sometimes people who've literally scraped that £50 together and there's just no chance. There's just no chance that they've got 20 quid right there and then. And if that's the case, fair enough. You know, you cannot force somebody to pay for something that if they physically don't have the money. Um, but in those cases, I would just make sure that I was staying on top of that situation over the coming days and keeping them infused about it maybe sending them a couple of videos of, of last year's kickoff or you know perhaps uh, I think there was one from you know Wes did a promotion or something this week a, you know a talk or something on it anyway you know just send them a couple of videos that keep them excited about it tell them who we're going to sort the lift shares out with tell them who else is coming oh so and so in the team they booked their ticket today you know you know make sure when you get that 20 quid you book it just keep them excited about it because if you forget about it then you can bet your bottom dollar that they will too awesome um, and lastly what happens if they don't want you to come on the supported appointments with them <laughs> they want to do the appointments on them i'm, I'm all right i'll just do the them. On i shoot them i mean it, it you know i'm not gonna lie there there are a few people 
In fact, actually, in all honesty, I can only actually think of one person who has said they don't want anybody coming with them for their sported appointments who's actually gone on to get any customers. So I'm not going to sit here and say to you that it isn't possible. Of course it's possible because, you know, people like Jogger join the team and they didn't have an upline particularly. You know, so it, of course it happens. You can be successful without this. But if you want to build a team of people who the majority are successful and the majority are then able to build individual teams themselves who are successful and duplicate down, then you've got to stick to a, you've got to stick to a system. And I think this system <clears throat> is the best one that I've used. And, and all I've done, it, it's the same system that Hannah's used. It's the same system that Jogger's used. It's the same system that our entire team has been using since the team started. Um, there's, it, it, there's not even a lot of difference in what I do. I think I just marginally simplified it and am marginally more direct about it. And I'm massively passionate about making sure that it's happening in my team. And that's the only difference really, other than that, it's the same system. So if somebody says to me that they don't want to do any element of it, my question simply to them is, do you want to be successful in this business? Um, because if you don't, if you, I mean, if, if doing it your way is more important than doing it in a successful way that is tried and tested, then please feel free. But always feel that you can come back to me when it doesn't work because it probably won't. Um, but in the main, you can draw, you can literally draw a line down the middle of our team with the people who followed the system who are now successful in the business and the people that didn't follow the system. Any element of it didn't come to an event, didn't book their six appointments, didn't do a business launch, whatever. The majority of those people are no longer in the business. Yeah. Simple. Just the results are there. I can't. I can't argue with it. And um, we've got seven minutes. So do you want to do that um, launch of that promotion for November? Oh yes. Um, yeah. What was? <laughs> right. Yes. That's it. I mentioned earlier <laughs> that I'm passionate about the opportunity presentations, and I really, 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 really am. It's huge, it's huge in our team. When people come to that presentation, I don't know what the stats are, but I would hazard a guess and say that 90% of guests that come to that, that meeting become partners. Yeah. And wouldn't you want a 90% chance of recruiting everybody that you brought to that session? It's just incredible. So if you, if you attend and bring a guest to an opportunity presentation in November, you will receive in December, yeah, I know Katie's like screaming because she can't come to one in November. Well, find one in Australia. I don't care. Just come to one. If you come to one and you bring a guest in November, you will get a special prize in December. And I'm not going to tell you what the prize is yet, but it's really, really special. So you can find out the dates of all the local opportunity presentations to you or to your prospects by going onto the partner portal, training and events. Um, booking system and looking under opportunity presentations for those who are new they are about 30 to 40 minutes long they're done by two company trainers who are very experienced at not only presenting but also the business and they present the utility warehouse opportunity to you and your guests and like Alex said it is nine out of ten people who come as a guest join within the first week of coming so they really do work they really are important and also just for you to go along to because they remind you why you joined and you you leave with a new sort of buzz um so exactly. we need to have to evidence of this yeah, i was just gonna say so hannah and i are going to be at the opportunity presentation next thursday evening at Ch in chatham so if you're coming to that one just make sure that we've seen you but if you go to any other opportunity presentation you need to take a selfie with you and your guest and someone else who's at the opportunity presentation that we recognize one of the, so presenters, one of the presenters yeah one of the presenters one of the trainers so that we know that you haven't just like set it up in your bedroom or something all right it's a whole different sort of business right there um okay great so that is any questions then let us know please do communicate that with your team because obviously it will massively help your you if your team are going to um, the opportunity presentations as well. Um, and thank you, Alex, for going through all that. So that is a call on how to get people nearer to QD. So hopefully to six, seven, eight customers, couple of partners within their first 45 days. We're gonna do another call in a couple of weeks about the next step, aren't we? So getting them to FTL, um, using all the things that we have available, like the opportunity presentations, the Zoom opportunity presentations, various things we've got going on and how to help you build your team and uh, get that little bit further. So thanks, Alex. Any questions, you know where she is. Um, this is recorded. I will send out the link later. Um, I 